I'm going to be talking about uh, uh, Meiji Restoration. The Meiji Restoration, also known as the Meiji Revolution or Renewal, was a chain of events that brought about enormous changes in the political and social structure of Japan. It occurred in the later half of the 19th century, a period that spans both late Edo period and the beginning of the Meiji Restoration. The formation in 1866 of the Satsuma Chosu Alliance between Saigo Takamori, the leader of the Satsuma clan, and uh, Kido Takayoshi, the leader of the Chosu clan, built the foundation of the Meiji Restoration. These two leaders supported Emperor Komai, Emperor Meiji's father, for the purpose of challenging the Tokugawa shogunate and restoring the emperor to power. On February 3rd, 1867, Emperor Meiji ascended the throne after the death of his father, Emperor Komai, on January 1867. This period also saw Japan's change from being a feudal society to having a capitalist economy and left the Japanese with lingering Western influence. The Tokugawa shogunate came to its official end on November 9, 1867 when Tokugawa Yoshinobu put his prerogatives at the emperor's disposal and resigned after 10 days. This was effectively the restoration of the imperial power. Shortly after this, in 1868, the Bosin War started in which the Chosu and the Satsuma clan defeated the ex-shogun's army. This forced Emperor Meiji to strip Yoshinobu of all his power and set the stage for the final restoration. On 3rd January 1868, the Emperor made a formal declaration of the restoration of his power. Some of the Shogun's forces fled away to Hokkaido where they started or attempted to form a breakaway Republic of Edo. But the forces loyal to the emperor ultimately ended this attempt in the Battle of Hakodata in Hokkaido and finally formed the imperial power of the Meiji ruler. The leaders of the Meiji Restoration, as this revolution came to be known as, acted in the name of the imperial power. The word Meiji means enlightened rule and the goal of this was to combine Western advancement with the traditional Eastern values. The main leaders of this restoration were Hito Hirobumi, Takayoshi, Itagaki, Yamagata, etc. However, political power transformed from the Tokugawa shogunate to an oligarchy consisting of all these leaders. Meiji restoration accelerated industrialization in Japan which led to the rise of military authority till 1905 and under the slogan enrich the country and strengthen the military. The Meiji oligarchy that formed the government under the rule of the imperial authority started certain measures to consolidate the power against the remnants of the Edo government shogun, daimo and the samurai classes. Therefore we see there was an overall change, overall revolution during the Meiji period or after the Meiji restoration. There was change in the sphere of society, there was change in the sphere of economy, there was change in the sphere of education, there was change in the total society. During the Tokugawa period there are certain social change which became very remarkable. The whole society during the Tokugawa period was divided into different parts. But during the Meiji period, we see a remarkable change. This class distinction of the society was abolished. The untouchable Hinin class, they were getting privileges during the, after the Meiji restoration. Moreover, the higher classes stopped hating the farmers or the peasantry class which formed 80% of the total population of Japan. The Hinin class got services in the government. On the other hand, feudalism was abolished. The feudal lords gave their lands and people at the disposal of the emperor and they joined the emperor's service 
in many ways. Moreover, we see that the class distinction which has totally ended with the Meiji Restoration brought about an overall change in the Meiji period. Otherwise, we see that previously there was a class distinction which we do not see during this period. The National Army was formed during the Meiji period. The feudal army of the Tokugawa Shogunate was ended. And this national army was at the disposal of all the classes of the society. So the army became very important and there was a mandatory being declared by the government that all male members of Japan of 21 years of age have to serve the army for four years compulsorily and they have to be at the reserve for other some other few years. On the other hand, we see that there was change in the society, there was almost change in the all aspects of society. Gaslight was introduced, post and telegraph system was introduced, education became very very important during the Meiji period. University was formed in 1869. On the other hand, we see that after two years, this university was declared as the Department of Education. Elementary education became compulsory from 1872. There were higher education, there were higher schools, there were middle colleges, there were university. Therefore, this revolu revolutionized the whole education system of Japan. We see Western influence in the education field. We see influence of the Americans, we see influence of the Germans, we see influence of the French. On the other hand, female education became very important in Japan, though till 1902, female education was closed. Higher education was closed to the Japanese women. But still, the education system was revolutionized after the Meiji Restoration. Another significant change we see during this period was the translation of foreign books to Japanese languages. In 1873, the Society for Translation was formed. Many foreign books, many Western books were transformed, translated into the Japanese language. On the other hand, the Japanese students were allowed to go abroad to get training and education from the Western countries. And by the end of 1880s, 34 foreign experts visited Japan. So we see that with the coming of the Perry mission with the coming of the Harris mission, westernization started in Japan. But ultimately with the Meiji restoration, westernization reached its peak. And we also see that there was total economic development in Japan. There was tenancy act was legitimized. There were a number of land reforms. The daimos and the samurais, they gave their land and people to the emperor. Then we see that banking system started in Japan. The first banking system, the first national bank was opened, was introduced in 1873. Then in 1876, other four banks were started. So banking system developed in Japan. Also, there was postal saving system in Japan was also introduced during this period. So Meiji restoration brought about an overall change in the Japanese society. Previously Japanese society was a closed door society but with the influence of the West, with the Western missionary missions coming to Japan and with the Meiji restoration the Japanese society became an open society. You talked of the uh, how class division was abolished during the Meiji period, how Hinen, they were the lowest class and they were given privileges. So were, was there any vested interest for giving them privileges like we see in India here, the low caste? The, no, like at that time during Japan, during the Meiji restoration, that time I don't think that the Meiji newly formed Meiji government did actually have any vested interest. Previously, in the Tokugawa period, we see uh, the class division in Japan. Society was divided into many classes like samurai, peasants, merchants, craftsmen, Ita and Hinin. But, and these lower class people were totally exploited during the Tokugawa period. 
So to stop this exploitation, class distinction was abolished totally. And after the abolition of class distinction, these lower class untouchable Hinnins, they were given lots of privileges during the Meiji period. And there was no vested interest as such for providing such services to the lower classes. There was no elected body as such that was aiding the Meiji rulers to rule the nation. Of course there was elected but so it was maybe not... these people also had voting rights maybe so that it was a later vote. on but at the time initially it the nation has gone through a tremendous feudal structure. This was a change from a feudal structure to a modern society. So modernization started with the Meiji restoration. So there was a total change and there was a body. The oligarchy consisted of certain leaders who were trying to influence the Meiji ruler Mutsuhito. But still at the initial stage, there was no such vested interest. But this oligarchy consisted of leaders who were mostly from the Chosu and Satsuma domain. You mentioned that the Japanese government was encouraging students to go abroad for higher studies. So was there no fear of the Japanese government that uh, once these students were enlightened in Western political science, maybe theories of Marx, socialism, uh, they might try to overthrow the monarchy of Japan and try to establish a total democracy or maybe a communist government? No, at that point, you know, Japan was entering from a feudal structure to a modern structure. So modernization was the main priority of Japan. At that time, they did not have such thoughts in their mind that these students who are going abroad might uh, try to uh, set up a democratic system. It was that they were sending these students, they were sending commissions, they were sending missions so that they are enlightened with the Western thoughts and they would return to the country and help the Japanese government, society and economy. So at that time, they did not have such ideas in their mind. Because initially, they have just, the restoration took place. So was it in keeping with this modernization that women education was suddenly given so much of importance? Yes, because edu universities were formed in 1869. Then after that, education for, of, from all level, from elementary education, middle school education, higher education, college education, everything was given important. Not only that, other is commercial institutions were also opened. How was the female education scenario in Japan before the Meiji Restoration? Were girls not educated at all except maybe the Gishas? Female uh, education before uh, Meiji Japan you know, Japan at that time was a closed door society. So the Japanese girls lived in the home and they had a home oriented life. And education at that time was not so advanced. Advancement of female education started with Meiji Restoration. Yet there's a clause that till 1902, higher education for Japanese women were closed. So we see that though it is uh, going, entering the modern period, though it is entering the modern phase, but still, for female education, they had some biasness. And for this reason, till 1902, higher education was not provided to the women. This was the scenario of Japan. On the other hand, we see that banking system developed. Previously, there was no banking system in Japan. But in, with the major restoration, banking system developed. On the other hand, we also see that uh, there was total industrial development in Japan. Industrialization developed in Japan and the industrial structure was built on the infrastructure which had the Tokugawa shogunate had already built. Many industries were nationalized. Many, all, most of the industries got the help of the new Meiji government. But the Meiji government gave importance to non-strategic industry. Though previously, strategic industry was very important. But the Meiji government gave very much importance to non-strategic industry like glass, sulphate, cement, um, sodium, etc. Another thing we see during this period it is woolen textiles. Woolen textiles developed during this period. Silk drilling became mechanized 
and silk reeling industry also developed during this Meiji period. Another thing uh, we see that big uh, industrial houses coming up and they are helping the government because lack of fund was one of the main reason for industrial backwardness in Japan. Because the Meiji government was just formed. So the Meiji government needed lots of fund for industrialization. So in this crisis situation, the big industrial houses known as Zaibatsus, they came up and they helped the government to develop industries. On the other hand, we see that um, with the coming of the Western missions and with the restoration, another important change took place in Japan. The, the people of Japan started learning foreign languages because they wanted, they wanted to know about the Western books, Western journals, Western magazines. So they started learning foreign languages. So learning a foreign language became very popular in Japan and also the women population also started learning foreign language. This was very important. There were lots of industries in Japan. We are seeing shipbuilding industry, railway industry, coal industry, cement industry. So there were lots of industrial development took place in Japan. From an agricultural economy, Japan became an industrialized economy during the Meiji period. The Meiji period revolutionized the whole society. The Meiji period brought about total change in the social order. There was a great difference seen from the previous period. So Meiji restoration brought about total change in the Japanese society. Now another important thing we see in Japan, 1870, the Ministry of Industry was started. And Ito Hirobumi was the first Minister of Industry. And from 1873 to 1878, he was the Minister and it was his initiative under his influence that total industrial change took place in Japan. So we see a total development, a total developmental scenario started in Japan. Though in 1853, the Perry mission started, in 1858, the Harris mission came to Japan. These were the entry points. These entry points did a lot of, uh, you know, influence had a lot of influence on the Japanese society because Western powers were entering though restoration did not take place at that time it took place in a later period but these were the entry point through which Western influence started entering Japan and this revolutionized the whole society which ultimately brought about the Meiji restoration and with Meiji restoration, Japan entered the modern period, Japan entered the modern times, and Japan became modernized. There was rapid industrialization in every sector of industry, there was development. Not any industry, there were no industries which did not get help from the new Meiji government. There is again a new class of people coming up, the Zaibatsu, who were helping the government for industrial development. There were other commercial institutions coming up, there was the banking system which was introduced in Japan. There was a postal banking system which started in Japan. There was a total change in the total economic structure of Japan. The feudal economies were changed into a modern economic structure. So Japan was entering, Japan now became an important member in the family of nation after Meiji Restoration. In the social sphere also we see there is a lot of changes. Class distinction was abolished. Translation started in Japan. New periodicals, new magazines, newspapers from the West were started coming to Japan. Japanese students were allowed to go out to the West or go out, to the, go out abroad for receiving education. Western experts were coming to Japan. So there was a total, there was a total change in Japan. The total structure changed from being a feudal structure to be transforming it to a modern structure. So Meiji Restoration is one of the very important incident in the whole Japanese history because it brought about Japan, it brought about a modern era to Japan, it gifted Japan with modernization, it brought about total change in the Japanese society from a feudal structure, it developed into a modern structure. 
from an agrarian economy, it's developed into an industrial economy. So there was a total change. It revolutionized the whole society. And with this, Japan entered the modern period. On the other hand, we see another important feature in Japan at this time, that currency system developed. Currency system developed and the central bank of Japan had the power to issue currency. This total industrialization of Japan, which brought about Japan, which gave Japan modernization, did not follow a meandering course. There was boom and there was depression. So Japanese industrialization did not follow a meandering course due to the successive boom and depression in Japan. On the other hand, we see another very remarkable change during this period. We see that with the coming of the Western powers, dress and fashion also changed. There was also a change in the dress and fashion of Japan. Though women, there was no such change in the women's dress, but still the Japanese people had, were influenced by the Western attires. So they, want, they were very much influenced and they liked the Western attires. So slowly it seems that West was penetrating into Japan. And this Western penetration ultimately brought about the total change of Japan. And this change was remarkable. Because unless Western powers entered, Japan would not have seen this remarkable change this revolutionary change of the society. So Western powers played an important role in westernization of Japan, in the industrial development of Japan, and the Meiji ruler brought about a total change in the Japanese social and economic structure. So Meiji Restoration is one of the very important incident in the Japanese history, which should be remembered because it revolutionized the whole society. And you said that there was a compulsory conscription for four years of the Japanese uh, boys. Mm -hmm. So was there any like possibility of war? war there was no possibility time? of war. Actually, Japan had previously a feudal structure. So the army was a feudal army. But with the Meiji Restoration, Japan has entered the modern era. At the initial stage, there was no modern or you know, Western, uh, Western uh, type army in Japan. So in order to form a very efficient army, like the Western system, but like the West, they made this compulsory declaration for joining the army. So if it was trying to strengthen up its army, then why... Our non-strategic non industries more encouraged than strategic industries. You know, previously strategic industries were already encouraged. So these non-strategic industries were not at all, they were neglected. So in order, f and industrialization means strategic and non-strategic de industrial development. So for a total industrialization, this strategic and this non-strategic industries were developed. Was, were non-strategic industries developed uh, in order to increase employment? Yes, of course. Non-strategic industries were developed to uh, start employment facilities or provide employment facilities because you should remember that the samurais had given up their lands. The daimos have given up their lands and they were jobless. And this created discontentment over the country. And if this discontentment, you know, rises up, then the Meiji ruler will completely, there will be a complete breakdown of the Meiji ruler. So in order to satisfy this class of people, this sort of industry, industrial development was uh, very important. So the samurai were the main people who were investing in these non-strategic industries? No, samurais were not uh, investing. They, they were employed. They, they were employed. 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 Zaibatsus were... The investors. investors or they were like the Tatas and Billas of India. And the, but the samurai were wealthy still. They only had to give up their... No, no, they had to give up their land. status. No, or, they had to give up their land and people. Okay. The land and people were previously at the jurisdiction of the samurai. But after that, they had to give up 
it was under the control of the imperial authority of Japan. They had to give up their whole feudal status. That yes, is. they have to give whole feudal status and feudalism was abolished. Previously, the samurais were allowed to carry on sword. But after the restoration, they were not allowed to carry sword. And for this reason, there were a number of riots. And one of the important riots was uh, started by Saigo Takamori, which ultimately turned to a civil war. And Western army, Western trained army were appointed to stop the civil war. And the Meiji rulers got trainers from America, from Germany, from Britain, from France. Yes. But isn't it contradictory? Like at one one point of time, at once, while on the one hand they're encouraging non-strategic non-strategic industries, at the same time they're um, making it compulsory the four years conscription. Isn't it very contradictory the whole thing? Yes. It, it may sound contradictory, but Japan has to build, become a modern nation. And for a building up a modern nation, the well-trained army was very necessary. Previously, you should remember that Japan had, there was a transformation from a feudal structure to a modern structure. So they have already abolished the feudal army. And so to become a modern nation and to become an important member in the family of world nation, a strong army was necessary for Japan. Therefore, they made this a compulsory clause. Meiji restoration brought about total change in Japan. It revolutionized Japanese society, economy. It brought about industrialization in Japan. It transformed Japan from a feudal structure to a modern structure. It transformed Japan from an agrarian society to an industrial society. So Japanese industrialization was the gift of Meiji Restoration, which brought about a total change, total revolution in the Japanese society. It brought about total change in the life of Japanese people. and. With the Meiji Restoration, Japan became an important member of the world of nations.